But to build a decent, humane society, we start with hope. And let's take back control of our borders. So you're going to have to choose, like you did last time, who's going to have to work with whom. But I know that it's not just people in Scotland who feel let down by Westminster politics. For the last five years, we've been working with the British people through a long-term economic plan. And that plan is working. In a hung parliament, <clears throat> Plaid Cymru can win for Wales. For five years, our young people have been fearing they'll have a worse life than their parents. It doesn't have to be this way. Just imagine, David Cameron, the chaos in people's lives. The people who in the NHS don't know whether you're going to find the money. The people who don't know whether their nursery or their college or their schools are going to close. David well, Cameron. Nick is wrong about our plans, because, of course, we are going to raise five billion from tax evasion and aggressive tax avoidance, as we've done in this parliament. And that's part of the balanced plan that also involves putting more money into our NHS and cutting taxes you're not for working ask people. The very but to here, pay the, the, the very wealthy include some of the tax avoiders and evaders. Thank you, Nicola Stone. It's, it's really ironic, isn't it, hearing Nick Clegg and David Cameron argue when they've been hand in glove imposing austerity on the people of this country for the last five years. English taxpayers are a bit cheesed off with so much of their money going over Hadrian's Wall, giving people no oh. prescription charges <laughs> and no <laughs> university <laughs> tuition. You, Just... Nicola Sturgeon is absolutely right. You have a choice in the two largest parties here between austerity heavy and austerity light. I'm deeply concerned about what I see happening in our National Health Service because we see people waiting longer for their test results, longer in A&E, longer to see a GP, longer to have an operation. We've got to turn it round. There's only one group of politicians anywhere in this United Kingdom who've cut the NHS in the last five years, and that was the Labour Party in Wales. So when you hear Ed Miliband's promises, think about that. Health has been used as a political football by Labour and the Conservatives in order to try to score points off each other in, uh, ahead of the general election. And the people that suffer most when that happens are the patients and the staff in the Welsh NHS. There are 7,000 diagnoses in this country every year for people who are HIV positive, which is not a good place for any of them to be, I know. But 60% of them are not British nationals. But what we need to do is to put the National Health Service there for British people and families. Nicholas Sturgeon. When, when somebody is diagnosed with a dreadful illness, my instinct is to view them as a human being, mm. not consider mm. what country they come from. We had a tent, a tent erected in a hospital car park to treat people in 2015 uh, in our United Kingdom. I do not believe that is protecting the NHS and his spending plans for the next parliament are even more dangerous for our National Health David Service. David Cameron. But a strong NHS needs a strong economy. If we go back to Labour's plans for taxes and debt and spending and welfare, the economy will be wrecked and that will wreck the NHS. I want Britain to be open for business but not open to abuse. We celebrate the free movement of people in the EU. And as Nicola alluded to, many Britons have been able to take advantage of that to do what they want with their life. That's a real plus. Do you accept or not that in your renegotiation, free movement is not up for discussion? I don't accept that. Nigel is basically really? saying, give up before you've begun. No, no, fact, but... If you look at my track record on Europe, <laughs> I said, we I have the European budget. People <laughs> said it was impossible. We cut that European budget. I said, let's get out of these bailout funds where British taxpayers' money was being put into countries like Greece. People said, you'll never do that. We got out of those Greek bailout funds. So instead of giving up, let's get stuck in and negotiate. Now, I say we should deal with those exploitative zero-hours contracts is an absolutely crucial part of this immigration debate because you've got to create security for the working families of Britain and that's what I will do. Okay, let me take the issue of tuition fees head on. I, of course, famously, infamously, couldn't uh, put into practice uh, my party's policy on tuition fees for reasons which I hope you're familiar with. They were introduced by Labour and actually jacked up by Labour and uh, there was no money left. I grew up in a working-class family. I wouldn't be standing here as First Minister of Scotland without the free education I had access to. As a politician now, I have no right to take that same entitlement away from the next generation of young people. Uh, but, you know, it was a broken promise. You betrayed the young oh, people can I of just, our can country. I reply, can I reply Very to that? Brief. I mean, you know, I, I get this sort of pious 
uh, a stance from Ed Miliband. This is the man who was part of the government that said no boom and bust in the economy and crashed our economy, jeopardising the future generations and life chances of millions of people in this country. I've apologised. I've taken responsibility for the mistakes I've made. Why don't you, in front of the British people, Ed Miliband, apologise for we your role got it in crashing... We no, said... no, no, don't say, not, nothing euphemistic. Say, I'm sorry for crashing of the course, British economy. Of course, Ed Miliband. You Ed Miliband. Miliband. said we got it wrong on bank regulation. We've got some of the most brave and professional armed services anywhere in the world, and tonight's a good moment to, to say thank you to them for all they do. We're a nation of great inventors. Like that, when there's homeless people on the streets who've been in the services. Not from the audience, thank well, you. I, I think it's good to say... Because I'm worried that at the end of the day, there's more thank of us than much there is them. Well, the, 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 they're not listening the, to our concerns. But the, the lady makes an important point, which is there are people who come out of our armed services who do have difficulties, and that's why we should be putting money into the armed forces charities that help homeless people and people also with mental health problems when they come out of our armed services. Thank you very, so she makes very much. An important Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our free-flowing debate. There's been a lot discussed here over the last two hours, a lot for us all to reflect upon.